Hello and welcome back to the series on Latin NLP with Python. In this video, we are going to continue looking at tokenization. Now, in the last two videos, we looked at line tokenization and we looked at sentence tokenization. In this video, we're going to now look at word tokenization. So the breaking up of a text into individual words. And we are going to look at some of the applications of this, such as word frequency counting. That's going to be one we talk about but not look at. And the ability to convert an entire text into lemma and some of the uses for that. And the ability to automatically go through and decline every word uh, in a text. So let's go ahead and first import our ability to actually tokenize words. So we're going to say from cltk.tokenize.word uh, import word tokenizer. Now important to remember that you have to capitalize everything the way I've done it, otherwise it won't work. So let's scroll down and let's now go through and create a basic function for generating tokens of words based on the CLTK function. So we're going to say uh, def is going to be, let's say word talk. There we go. And that's going to take a single argument and that's going to take a text. Now we can tokenize an entire text or we can do what I'm going to do in this video and simply tokenize a single sentence. So we're going to say word tokenizer. That's going to be the object we create and that's going to be equal to word tokenizer. And we're going to pass in one argument and this is the language in which we are going to tokenize and that's going to be Latin. So a string Latin. So we're going to say words is equal to word tokenizer dot tokenize. And we're going to say text. So that object that we passed in up here is going to then be tokenized in line 70 right there. Now, all we have to do is simply return words. And we're going to see that printed off in just a second. So you can see how it works. Now, let's go ahead and let's take our entire text and break it down into sentences using our send talk function. So we're going to say sentences is going to be equal to send talk and we're going to pass in uh, the first argument is going to be the text itself. So it's going to pass in the text here on line 74. And then the second argument we're going to pass in is we're just going to say punct is going to be equal to true. So we're going to use the default here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab sentence one. So we're going to say uh, sentence is going to be equal to sentence. We're just going to say sentence is zero. That's going to grab the first sentence. And let's print off sentence just to make sure everything is running correctly. Always good to do that and troubleshoot on the fly. Great. Looks like it looks good to me. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to say words are going to be equal to word talk. And now we're going to pass in that sentence. So now we can print off words. And we should see that entire sentence now broken down into individual words. We can do the same thing with text if we want to. This is me just breaking everything down so we can actually handle it much more manageably in this video. So we're going to do just a sentence now for the rest of the video. Great. So we got Delecto, Filio, Yosepo, etc. on down the list. I'll be in a salutum. So now what we can do is we can start to work with this text. We can convert this entire text into proper lemma. So we can say uh, words is going to be equal to uh, lemma words. So it's going to take that list. It's going to pass it into our lemma function up here, and that's going to output a list of lemmas. So now we can print off words just to see what the result is. And it should be a list of tuples. And in fact, it is. Now, if you remember, remember from our lemma video, and I'll have a link in the description down below, we've got delecto in this tuple, and we got doligo in this tuple. So we have the original word on index zero, and we have the lemma of that word in index uh, uh, one, so the second position. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and now start to actually decline every word in this list. And how do we do that? Well, we can make a new list. So we're going to do this manually right now. We're going to say new is going to be equal to an empty list. And we're going to say for word and words, we're going to iterate across those uh, that list of tuples. And we're going to say new dot append word. We're going to index. Uh, we're going to index one, which is going to grab the uh, the Ligo, the Filius, the Yosepo, etc. on down the list. Let's go ahead and print off new so you can see what this looks like. 
and it should be, there we go, uh, just a list of our, our lemmas now. And as we're going to see in a second, this Albinus 1 is going to give us problems. We're going to approach that, though, in just a second. So let's go ahead now and try to decline all of these words. And you're going to notice that I'm going to get an error in just a second. So I'm going to say dex, and I'm going to call our uh, declension function, which was DEC, dec, and we're going to pass in that list. Let's scroll up here so we can kind of look at the declension function once again. And as you can tell, it's here on line 33. It's expecting a list. It's going to use the Colatinus decliner, and it's going to return a dictionary of all the different things in that list. So what we are going to do is run this and then try to print off decks. And here is the promised error. We're getting an unknown lemma. Now, a great way to troubleshoot an error like this is to print off everything in a loop so you can figure out which one is actually giving you the error. And if we do that, we run it and we see everything's working great. But something in particular here is giving us a problem, and it's Albinus 1. And it's also, Yose oh, sorry, it's Yoseppo here. So what we can do is we can go ahead and get rid of that. And we can add in an exception. Now, it's not good practice to just add in a general exception. I'm going to do it now, though, just for the demonstration of how you can kind of work around getting an unexpected error here, a lemma error. So we're going to use try, except I'm just going to say exception, even though I know there is a specific kind of exception that I can block out just to speed things along. And now when I run this, I get everything working correctly because Yosepo, the one that was actually giving us a problem a second ago, is now removed from that list. So I can print off anything from this list now. Remember, Filius was a word that was in that list, and we'll see Filius actually appear perfectly declined. We can do the same thing with... Uh, uh, albinus, let's try Albinus 1, there we go, and you're going to see Albinus 1 gives us a key error, that's because that was a problematic one, and we'll do the same thing with Yosepo, this is just to demonstrate that they have not made it into our dictionary because they returned errors, these are proper nouns, I suspect that might be one of the reasons why CLTK struggles with finding them, but my point in all this is, is that this is how you can go through and use the word tokenizer to quickly uh, break the entire text up into individual words. And then from those words, identify all of their lemma, so their roots. And then with that information, you can kind of go through and quickly automatically decline every single word, all using CLTK. Now, another reason why you want to care about word tokenization is going to be for other things. So... There's a big debate in NLP and machine learning if you should limitize an entire text. In some situations, you really need to. In other situations, you want to retain that meaning and that nuance that a non-limitized text might have. Because lemmas don't represent the full meaning and context of a word. They just take all words, reduce them down to their core elements. So if you're trying to analyze a text to see how certain authors use specific words, uh, throughout an entire corpus, you might want to limitize everything because you can identify the usage of a single word because every single word has been converted down to a root. In other instances, you might want to keep a non-limitized text because that word's specific context, so its declension, its conjugation form, that's going to be important to meaning, and that's going to change depending on the type of NLP analysis that you're doing. So anyways, that's for other videos and other tutorials. This is how you use CLTK, though, to achieve one very important task in NLP, and that is word limitization. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you for listening. In the next two videos, really kind of the next three, we're going to start to talk about some of the limitations of CLTK. Don't get me wrong, CLTK is fantastic, but there are certain limitations that it has, and we're going to see that with named entity recognition. So that's all for now. Thank you for listening.